Here we're going to look at finding areas using the standard normal table. And in this video, I'm going to look at tables that look like this. Or in other words, they give the area between 0 and the z value we look up. And another common type of table is something like this with the area to the left. But I look at that in another video, and I won't look at that here. Suppose z is a random variable with a standard normal distribution. What is the probability that z lies between 0 and 1.43? First of all, note that the answer would be the same if I had less than or equal to or less than or equal to here, because the probability that the random variable z is exactly equal to any constant like 1.43 is 0. z is a continuous random variable, so the probability that it is exactly equal to any constant is 0, and thus it doesn't matter that we have less than here instead of less than or equal to. So first of all, we draw our standard normal curve. We're drawing our standard normal curve. Here's 0 in the middle. And out here somewhere is 1.43. And the probability that z lies between 0 and 1.43 is simply the area under the curve between 0 and 1.43. That is the probability that we're looking for right in there. And to find that, we would integrate the probability density function between 0 and 1.43, but that's not easy to do and requires numerical techniques, so it's been done for us and the results have been put in a table. So this particular version of the table gives the area between 0 and the z value we look up, which is precisely what we needed to find. Our problem involves finding the area between 0 and 1.43. So this is going to be easy for us. We need to look up this value of z in the table and find the corresponding area. The first decimal place of z is found here. So we would find 1.4 right there. That's our first decimal place that we're looking for. And the second decimal place is found up top, across the top in the columns. And we need 0.03. So when we find where those two intersect, we get 0.4236. Or in other words, the area that we're looking for here is 0 0.4236. And that is the answer to our probability question. This is equal to 0 0.4236. So suppose we want to know the probability z is greater than 1.43. So again, we draw our picture, draw our picture so we can illustrate this. And we have 0, and we have 1.43 over here, and this is the area that we want. That is the probability random variable z is going to be greater than 1.43. So we have to realize a couple of points. First of all, the standard normal distribution is symmetric about 0. The left and right sides are mirror images. It is symmetric about 0. And since it is a continuous probability distribution, the area under the entire curve is 1. The area under the entire curve is 1. It's symmetric about 0. This implies here that 0.5 of the area is to the left of 0, and 0.5 of the area is to the right of 0. And so the probability that z is greater than 1.43, well, we just found this bit over here in the table to be 0 0.4236. And so this bit over here must be 0.5 minus 0 0.4236. And that is 0 0.0764, and that is our answer. Now another thing that comes up for us is the fact that we only have positive values in the table. If we look back at that table, it only has positive values. But this doesn't pose much of a problem, again, due to the symmetry about 0 argument. If we wanted, let's say, the probability that z was less than minus 0.43, we would draw our picture here, and we would say here's 0. Here's minus 1.43. If I want this area, well, wait a minute. It's symmetric about 0. So the area between 0 and minus 1.43 is exactly the same as the area between 0 and 1.43. And so this bit out here is 0 0.4236. And this bit out here is 0 0.0764. So we're going to use that symmetry argument uh, a fair bit. What is the probability that z lies between minus 1.28 and 0.72? Well, again, we draw our picture. And we put 0 in the middle. And minus 1.28 is over here. And 0 0.72 is somewhere in there. And the probability z lies between those two values is simply the area under the curve between those two values. And so we're going to split this up into the two components. We're going to say that this has to be equal to the area between 0 and minus 
that area there. And we're simply going to add the area between 0 and 0 0.72, this area here. This is going to be very simple to get. We're going to look that up straight in the table. But we're going to have to recognize that this bit is going to be exactly equal to the area between 0 and 1.28, again using the symmetry about 0 argument, because our table does not have negative values of z. That's why we had to use this argument. So we are going to look up 1.28, and we're going to look up 0.72, and we're going to get our areas, and we're, and we're going to get our answer. So when I look up 1.28, I go down here and I see that this value is 0.3997, and so that's telling me that the area between 0 and 1.28 is 0 0.3997, and I'm going to look up 0 0.72, and I get 0 0.2642. So the area between 0 and 0 0.72 is 0 0.2642. So this is 0 0.3997, which implies that this is 0 0.3997, and this is 0 0.2642. So the answer then is the sum of these two areas. That's the entire area between these two values. And if you add those two up, you'd see that this is 0 0.6639. That is the entire area between minus 1.28 and 0.72, and thus that is the probability that z lies between those two values. What is the probability that z is greater than or equal to minus 0.37? Well, let's draw our picture. Here's 0. Minus 0.37 is over here on the left somewhere, and we want the entire area to the right of that value. The probability z is greater than or equal to minus 0.37 is the area to the right. And we know that this is a negative value of z, and we're not going to have a negative value in the table, and so we are going to have to rely on the symmetry argument. Say that that area is the same as the area to the left of 0 0.37. And then we're going to have to recognize that when we look up 0.37 in the table, we're not going to get our final answer because it is going to give us the area between 0 and that value. And so we're going to have to say, wait a minute, this is going to be equal to the area to the left of 0 plus the area between 0 and 0 0.37. And this is going to be found in the table. And this, we know, is 0 0.5. So now we're down to something we can actually figure out. Let's go to our table. Now I find my first decimal place here, 0.37. Here's my value, 0 0.1443. The table tells me that this area is 0 0.1443. I know by the symmetry about zero argument that this entire area to the left of zero is 0 0.5, and so the final answer is the sum of those two things, 0 0.6443. That is the area to the right of minus 0.37. Now there's another common type of problem that we run into. So far we've been given a z value and we want to find an area, but very commonly as well we are given an area let's say 0 0.67 to the left, and we want to find the z value here that makes that happen. That's another common type of problem, and I have a separate video for that one.